going to create here a model in Pro E of the part that's shown up here in an isometric view in the upper left hand corner. This part has a length of seven units, a depth of four units, and a height of three units. The way I'm going to construct this part is if it was being machined from a solid block, and I'm going to create the block and then utilize the creation of features to remove all the material until I end up with this part. So the first thing we're going to start with is creating a sketch of this 7 by 4 inch or unit sketch on the top surface. Now I'm just going to use a unit scale of 100 to let me utilize the default scale of Pro E. So I'm going to make this 400 and I'm going to make this 700 and I'll use this to recenter my part and I'll change to an isometric view and then again recenter my part. So now I'm going to be done with the sketch. I will use my extrude tool and create this to be a depth of 300. And I'll accept it and now I have my basic shape that is 7 units in this direction or 700 four units and three units. So what I'm going to do is go back to the sketch now and the first feature we're going to put on are we're going to use a, the rounding tool to round off these two edges to a radius of two or 200 in our expanded scale. So I'm going to come down here to the round tool and I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to rotate around here and use the control key and select this edge. And what I want to do is come up here to the dashboard and enter in the radius value of 200. And if I rotate around, you'll see that that is actually giving me what I want. So I will come over here to the check mark and accept that as a feature. So here I have the initial extrude here in my model tree, and now my first feature onto that, which are the rounds. Now going back to the image, I now see that I have to remove all of this material from the tangent line here to the edge of the block. So that's going to be a 3 by 4 by 2 um, removal of material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch on the top plane here. And I'm going to have to do something and introduce a new concept referring to constraints. So I'm going to take my rectangle here and the lower left hand corner will automatically snap to this edge where my coordinate system is but I don't have the ability to snap to either of those surfaces so I'm just going to draw a general rectangle then I'm going to come over here to this icon and hidden under this icon are a whole array of different opportunities for controlling the geometry the one that you'll end up using the most is the, con is the concentric tool or the coincident tool rather so this tells me that I want to make this line coincident with this line or the edge that defines this face. And again, I want to make this line coincident with this face or the edge that I can see on this view. And I'll say OK. And then the only thing I need to specify is this depth or the length of the, uh, the width of the rectangle, which as we said was a value of 300. So I'll say done and I'll go back to my isometric view, recenter my part, and I'll use the extrude button. Now instead of going up, I want to flip the direction, I want to remove the material, and the total material I want to move, remove is 200. And hit enter and accept it. And we've now removed that material, so the next step will be to add the rounds in on the front part. Again, there are going to be two of them, radius to be 200. And I'll come over here, utilize the rounding tool, select this edge, and I will use the control key and select the other edge. And the last dimension I used for the round tool was 200, so it uses that as a default, which is what I want, so I will select OK. And now again, we're building up our tree from the original extrude, the round, as I click on them, you can see that they become highlighted, 
the second extrude, and now the second round feature. Well, the next thing I want to do is I need to put this cut on the bottom corner. Well, this is a chamfer, and I'm going to, again, utilize one of the solid modeling tools over here referred to as a chamfer. So I'm just going to select this edge, and it's remembering a default unit that I've already utilized, which is 200, and it's using a D times D. It's telling me that this edge and this edge are going to be equal to each other. I could have utilized other values, like D1 by D2, and it initially starts out with those two values being equal, but I could come in here and change the depth of that chamfer. Well, I'm going to go back and create it back to 200. And once I'm done with that, I can use my check mark and say that I'm done. So that removed this material. Now the last thing I need to do is put a hole here that is concentric to this upper round boss. So I'm going to select the sketch on this surface. But now the question is, how do I make a concentric circle here? Is there an easy way to do it? Well, under the circle sketch tool, there's other variations, and this one is utilized to make concentric circles. So I'm going to click on it, and it wants me to select an item which is that this new circle is going to be concentric to. So I'm going to click on this edge, and then there's my new circle. So I'm going to click with the left mouse button, and then hit the middle mouse button to get out of that tool. And I'm going to say cancel. I don't have any more parts that I want to do, and I'm done with the tool. So this circle is going to have a, a diameter of 200. Now I'm just going to rotate up so we can see what we're doing. I'll actually put myself back into the isometric view and center it. And it doesn't want to center it. And I will use the, oh, I'm not out of the, the sketching tool, apologies. So we will come here and center our part. I'm popping up all sorts of weird things here. Cancel. Sorry, I'm going to pre-select that. So what I want to do is put myself in my isometric view and center my part. So now I will use the extrude tool. Again, I will flip the direction, remove the material, and in this case, I'm actually going to use the option here to have this uh, extrusion go through all surfaces. So I'll select that to make sure it goes all the way through, and I will select the check mark, and that gives me my isometric part. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the datum planes and turn off the coordinate system and turn off the um, spin center and put on my enhanced realism just to give a slightly different view and compare it to my part that I have created. So this is the model. Now a couple other things we can do in terms of viewing the model. I'll turn off my enhanced realism and I can look at this in just an edge view. I can look at it showing all the hidden edges, or I could do it in a straight wireframe view. So those are the different viewing options, and I can go back to my shaded view. So this concludes the creation of a simple part 